Well, I'm out in the shop today. Uh, <laughs> I don't typically do uh, installations, so I'm going to uh, take as much video as I can. Anyway, we're going to install one of my uh, 521 truck kits. I'll get back to this, but let's uh, let's take a peek here at uh, what we're working with today. Working on, rather. Uh, I'm not positive what year it is. Got to be late 71, 72. This is uh, Damon's 521, and uh, we're going to convert it from uh, front wheel drum to front wheel disc. And uh, that's a nice truck. You can tell it's been uh, been in storage for a bit. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, ours has weeds growing inside it, uh, sitting outside there. So uh, just a quick little uh, flyover of what uh, what we're playing with. Now here's the here's the real. Uh, cool part about this truck check that out and that's the new uh, micro combustion diesel motor from what he said oh, I'm just kidding it's an electric motor <laughs> anyway uh, that's not much uh, here nor there but uh, I just thought you'd like to take a peek since we're gonna be uh, Shooting a lot of video on this truck today. Uh, what we well, I don't know how much video is actually going to make it because it's going to be uh, to the final cut because uh, it's going to be a long ass video or a bunch of them. Uh, anyway, I'm not sure uh, it qualifies as an unboxing because I put it together. So uh, uh, the last kits that are going out, they get a packing list with everything that's in it. Uh, it shows the difference between the 620 and the 325, 25, 21. Uh, so let's dig back down here and and all the all the parts back here uh, those are pieces to my mill which is torn apart in disrepair right now uh, and I gotta get that back together in order to finish the uh, coat grinder project all right now oh, this one got bubble wrap some got foam some got bubble wrap some just got ceramic Here's the other bracket. So, got the seals, we'll mess with those later. Hopefully everything will fit well enough. Well, we use the emery cloth to oh, not gonna need the not gonna need the lug nuts because uh, he already bought custom lug nuts for his custom rims. Oh, yeah, we'll show putting those on today. Okay. So after I get this pulled out and laid out just a little bit, I'm going to uh, get the truck jacked up and start ripping stuff apart. There's my Harbor Freight jack. I don't know if you can see that with the the glare there. Uh, it's the uh, the high lift and the rapid pump, and uh, I've been real pleased with this jack. Uh, it goes down nice and low, gets under any of the lowered vehicles I've had in the shop, and uh, I love the uh, the foot pedal on the on the end here. Um, so let's uh, see if we can't get this puppy jacked up. Oh, I'm good. Put the jack stands out in the shed because I didn't plan on doing any work in the shop on cars. All right. Yeah, so I've got this up pretty high in the air. Uh, that high lift jack mainly because you know I don't like being <laughs> down close to the ground. I'm short enough, I'm always close to the ground, so... Uh, anyway, I just thought I'd show real quick. Uh, that's basically where I usually put the the jack stand, okay? Part of the reason is, is I like the fact that there's that flange there. Uh, that because of the steep angle I have it at, I don't plan on jacking up the rear end. If this jack stand wanted to slide forward, the uh, tabs on the top corners there would catch those ears. <laughs> keep it from sliding anymore. It's not going to anyway, but uh, uh, got them both set up. If you have jack stands like this, put the handles on the uh, 
outside like that because then uh, it's real easy to come under here with your toe. Instead of climbing under the car, you can come under the toe and hook that and pull it back out. So, uh, I think that's the uh, boring fact for the day. So I'll put that back in place. For anybody who's curious, there's the uh, underpinnings with the uh, rubber mat. And, uh, you know, the rest of it is uh, stock 591. All right. This is the uh, Ryobi 18 volt uh, with a fresh uh, lithium ion battery in it. I don't know how what he had these torque to. Uh, not, uh, not 100 pounds or anything like that, but. Right, it'll be still works great for this stuff anyway, so. Alright. I like the shirt color. It's uh it's tomato soup. But when I'm wearing it, it's tomato soup with a cracker in it. Oh, dead spiders. Nice. Okay. Let's get to uh tearing this apart and getting this crap off. Yeah. Yuck. It's dirty. Let's go back in here and do it the preferred way. And it's probably going to be a stinker since I, uh, it's not going to let me turn the wheel. Alright, so I went over this years ago. Easiest way to take uh, most cotter pins out is with wire cutters. Uh, and reason being, let's say you can see that they're, can you? Let's, uh, let's zoom in a little bit more here. Oh, 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 back's already bugging me. Okay, anyway, uh, they're still splayed out here a little bit, but you get enough bite with the wire cutters like that to take it out and uh, not have to uh, fight with it. So, this one actually happens to be more than finger tight, which is fine. It's as tight as it's supposed to be. So, I'm pretty sure this nut's got to go back on. Normally, uh, it's been a while since I did one of these, and uh, all right, we don't need the bearing. We do need this washer, though. I'm gonna hang on to that. We don't need the bearing, and I know I'm too tight. Uh, you can't see that, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to set the the bearing back in here and then uh, put the cap back on because the cap from the other hub will uh, go back on. So greasy parts. Yeah, this is why I uh, big reason why I quit working on cars. I've been putting a ton of time in on the CAD program, designing a belt grinder, and not once have I got greasy using the CAD program. Okay. Now, we don't have to really mess with much else there. We don't have to take all the brake shoes off and all that kind of crap. There is these locking plates down here. And I've shown these uh, before. Elsewhere, only one side's... Uh, down there. Uh, I think they're 14s. No, they're uh, 916, which is pretty close to 14. But let's uh, let's use the 916. Now these two bottom ones, three, 
thread into the spindle. Uh, the top ones here have nylocks on, so let's grab a wrench for that. And we won't need either of uh, any of these nuts and bolts because new ones come uh, new ones come in the kit. Okay, now, that's that. I'll, uh, I'm going to clean some of the grease out of here a little bit, and then I'm going to uh, zoom in, and we'll go over and do the uh, brake line part there. Well, I'm going to do that brake line part a little later, because I don't want to have that line open and have it draining the whole time while I'm putting the rest of this on. So I think I'm just going to leave that hanging and, uh, and uh, start marking and setting this up so it is going to take forever for uh, this video to come up on the computer all right taking the inner spacer off pipe wrench is definitely the uh, easiest way to go you can put chisels behind it and all that kind of stuff but uh once you get it moving, then uh, uh, pull out a little bit, or you can also try to stick a pry bar behind it. burned some grease in there before. That stinks. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about cleaning this up pretty before I do the cut, because uh, it'll uh, make a mess during the cut. So, I still have my bolt there. I'm just going to go ahead and use these at the same dimension and thread and everything like that as uh, what comes in the kit. They're just not quite as long as what comes in the kit. And <laughs> looking at these, it's like, sheesh, might as well just use these, heck. Yeah, the top one there is definitely too short. Okay, so I'm going to push it that way just a little bit and uh, snug that up just to hold it and take my scribe. And get a nice heavy line in there. Now, just to make sure, since I don't know how well it's going to show up on uh, the uh, video, or whatever, we'll take a silver sharpie there and put a line down too. So now we can uh, take them both off and decide which of ten different ways we want to cut it. Auto body uh, air saw, great. Sawzall, great. Cutoff wheel, great. Uh, die grinder with a cutoff wheel, exhaust cutoff tool, almost anything. Uh, probably even a regular hacksaw, which uh, I've never tried. All right, well, I went and got my hacksaw just to see. Uh, I don't think I've got it in me to do it with a hacksaw today. Uh, but you'd be really limited on your stroke, you know. Uh, I got a pretty old blade in here right now, so it's not going to cut very fast. But you limit it on your stroke, but you know, if axle is what you had, then you can do it. If you're doing a disc brake upgrade for Pete's sakes, you should have more tools than just a hacksaw. You can also come at it up from underneath. A lot of hacksaws will give you a 90 degree option. You can you can take the like carriage bolt type thing out and turn it, and then I could have the saw over here and cut. Uh, but this one doesn't have that, and I would have to turn the saw around like this to do it. Which, which I could do, but, you know, I'm not going to. 
I'm going to go get something with power. All right, well, my Ryobi four and a half, they're like uh, 40 bucks maybe at uh, Home Depot. Love this thing, works awesome. They're a lot uh, quieter, better gearing, they don't rattle. You know, they rattle at the end, there tons more on the Harbor Freight ones, although the Harbor Freight ones work fine for the $14 that they cost. I'm not pushing real hard in there. I want to make sure I get a good line in there. Once I get a good channel in there like I have now, now I can push if I wanted, but uh, just let the cutting wheel do the do the work. I'm not in any kind of hurry here. At least I'm not. Probably a better idea not to have uh, grease-covered rags uh, on the ground in your where your sparks are going. But now you're going to de deburr the edges with this. I've, I've said this before. Very light touch. This this disc is not meant for side loading. Okay, it's meant to to cut straight. So I'm doing a very light touch. So, I'm going to put it back up there and throw, just need it in there a little bit to hold it, that one, okay, I like where it's at, I got enough clearance I know it won't hit the uh, caliper, so that's what I'm talking about, you know, it, it sticks proud just a little bit, no big deal, the, uh, when the, uh, caliper goes on there uh it won't hit it and and you know if it does uh what i gotta pull the bracket back off and grind it down a little bit more I'm not gonna worry about it uh so i'm gonna take a little back break because my back's already killing me all right uh, da, 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 da. now there's 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 a the rust is, is built up a little bit and i want to make sure that uh I want to clean that off just a little bit, so let's uh, let's try the Scotch Brite. Pretty worn out one. <laughs> but that does the trick. Let's also try the wire wheel. one half dozen of the other. Hmm. Might be getting time to replace that one. fresh one and see what that does. All right. All right, so next up, I want to, uh, I want to do the, uh, Emery. And test fit the uh, bearing adapters. So, 
Nice. Perfect. Okay. Set that aside. Okay, and every now and then this one will have a tendency to... You're more likely to have some burrs out here because of the slot being there and that stuff. So, uh, so I don't need to try to resize it, basically. I'm just going to come in here with the emery and get some tooth. The Loctite doesn't have to have it, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll do it anyway. So, This is just brake cleaner. Nasty ass crap. But it cleans without leaving a residue. And that is the that is what we're after here. So alright, I want to let that dry for just a hair and then uh, move on to the Loctite. Alright, so this is the 680 Loctite that comes in the kit. This is a bearing and shaft retainer. Uh, forget the exact specs, it's good for a whole lot of gap and if you use the uh, primer it's good for even more and when I did these I checked the specs uh, they're still well within the specs so uh, something else you want to do real quick is uh, wipe out the bearing adapter as well just to make sure that it's nice and clean too and it's got a machined surface, so uh, it's not quite as polished smooth as the spindle was, so there's no real need to go back and uh, try to scotch bright it. Or uh, emery cloth it or whatever, so. Uh, okay. So, let's take the ampule. Set that there for a second. So, I'm going to put it on the top half toward the front here and then I'm going to go in here and put a fairly generous amount in there so uh, and, I, and, and actually I can go all the way around in here and this is the first edge to go on so uh, that's why I'm putting it there and then try to get it on there carefully and and then just give it a little Wiggle. I've got another video showing doing this on the bench and that stuff. And, uh, you can just do that. These are the towels their bearing adapters are typically wrapped in. So just make sure you don't have any hanging off there. And this is the rubber band that comes in the kit. So that's just to make sure that you know it doesn't walk its way off while it's still wet. Uh, you know, if your car is parked at an angle or something like that. So, uh, and let's put some on there. Now, on this one, I don't want to put it all the way around because uh, it's real hard to uh, keep it from getting on the thread. So, I'm putting it just on the bottom, and then I'm kind of dragging the, the top until I get it on there. And then I'll, I'll work it back and forth a little bit there and make sure that it's on there. I'll uh, wipe the excess off there, but then I also want to make sure that I go around the threads to make sure that I didn't wipe a bunch of that off onto the threads. So, and the threads don't have to be perfectly clean because the grease in there will keep the Loctite from <laughs> gluing to the thread. So, so I didn't, uh, part of the reason, well, the reason was I was lazy, but part of the advantage of not cleaning the threads is the fact that it won't uh, glue that on. Now that one, you push that on a little bit more and it kind of wedges itself onto the uh, taper in the back there. So this is good for now. I think uh, I think we can go tear open the uh, the other side now and get started on it.